I'm sure you've used history to flavor your TTRPGs before, but have you used history like a historian? And why would you want to? Let's be honest, historians are a little weird. They don't always think in the ways you'd expect. But if you're consciously or unconsciously leaning on history to flavor your games, I'd argue that thinking like a historian can have some real benefits in terms of immersiveness, engagement, and fun. So today I'm going to give you my top 5 tips for thinking like a historian when using history in your TTRPGs, whether you're a player or a GM. But first, we need to better understand how historians think. I'm going to show you clips from two vaguely medieval films. One has faced some pretty specific criticisms by medieval historians, while the other is widely celebrated by them and has been called the best medieval film ever made. The question is, which is which? I'm asking you, William Thatcher, to answer me with your name. It's not Sir William, it's not Count or Duke or Earl William, it's certainly not King William. I'm aware of that. You have to be of noble birth to compete. Any detail? The landscape is food. Do you want to eat or don't you? If the nobles find out who you are, they'll be the devil to pay. And pray that they don't. Now, if you guessed a knight's tale, you're right. Medievalists have been swooning about this film since it debuted, but why? The Northman has high quality reproductions of artifacts all through its costuming. A knight's tale is full of inaccuracies and anachronisms. The Northmen employed multiple academic specialists as consultants, while A Knight's Tale was largely written by its director. The Northmen makes overt references to medieval texts, while A Knight's Tale loosely speculates on what might have happened during Geoffrey Chaucer's lost years. Why the dramatic difference between the reception of these two pieces of fiction? What's going on here? And how can understanding the thinking here help us play better TTRPGs? So I think there are two main aspects to historians' thinking at play here. The first is the difference between accuracy and authenticity. While it is absolutely true that many historians keep compendious lists of the glaring inaccuracies in almost every game, film, television program, or whatever other piece of pop culture that they encounter, most of them also understand that the point of fiction is not to create an accurate facsimile of the past. Many will even be first to say that doing so would actually be pretty boring. Authenticity, though, is a whole other matter. Rather than trying to capture a true-to-life snapshot of the past, most historians are yearning for fiction and games that play with the past in various ways to creatively encapsulate the essence or flavor of a period. This is an important distinction when using history to flavor your games. Returning to our examples, the Northman foregrounds accuracy, but in doing so something important is lost. More on that in a minute. A Knight's Tale, on the other hand, is one of the few films that really successfully chooses to focus on authenticity. The film goes so far as to consciously cultivate anachronisms like music, pop cultural references, and fashion in order to make the Middle Ages and the people who lived in them more tangible and comprehensible to modern audiences. This connects us to the second aspect of how historians think about these things, which revolves around the concept of historical empathy. Historical empathy is the ability to look at the past and its peoples and to try to understand them on their own terms. Now, this doesn't mean that we agree with the actions of past peoples or share their perspectives, just that we use our intellect and our imagination for the purposes of perspective taking. 
A Knight's Tale is a great example of a piece of fiction that embraces the concept of historical empathy. The motivations, aspirations, tensions, and plights of all the characters are immediate and relatable without making modern audiences have to agree with them. Modern audiences will feel uncomfortable about the misogyny of the chivalric ethos that underlies most of the story. We're invited to relate to the past on its own terms because of certain creative choices of anachronism, but you get to make up your own mind. Now, you'll be able to think of your own examples, but the best GMs and players of TTRPGs create characters, stories, and whole worlds that invite opportunities for complex relationships and empathy in the same way. By comparison, the Northmen seeks to make the Viking Age as alien a place as possible. It curates a Viking Age that is so violent and brutal and unreasonable so as to make modern audiences uncomfortable with its ethics. The problem is that the film takes the very worst of a period and suggests that it applied to everyone living in it. Historian Tom Fairfax, reviewing the film for Epoch magazine, highlights this issue nicely. Violence was absolutely a part of the life in the Viking Age, but people in the Viking Age were still rational people with their own objectives. Medieval texts show us that violence was just one part of the Viking toolkit, and that when violence was used, it was a means to an end. As Eggers has said in an interview with The New Yorker, the society of the Northmen is governed by vengeance. His Viking Age is bleak, primal, and nihilistic. Now this is an important warning for players and GMs. Reductively playing with the past, without at least trying to relate to its people in their diversity and complexity, distances the whole narrative, limiting buy-in and engagement, which is really the whole point of role-playing games. This is the difference between a story that you tell or hear versus a story that you play out. So how can you lean on the thinking of historians to make the past and your stories more tangible and immersive? Here are my top tips. Okay, so to start, history belongs to everyone, but it isn't a collection of facts carved in stone. Like any field of knowledge, history is involved in a constant process of development, evolution, and revision to account for new ideas, interpretations, and evidence. This is why it's essential to park your ego and deliberately challenge what you think you know about the past by starting humble and with an open mind. Trust me, even the most seasoned scholars are constantly learning new things. When it comes to integrating history into your games, the first step is acknowledging that there is always more to the story and being open to new information. Maybe you've got ideas for a knightly inspired order of paladins and you think you know all that you need to know about medieval knights. Well, it was only a few weeks ago that we learned how diverse and interconnected the world of training and trading medieval warhorses was. The findings of this paper are really cool and reveal new knowledge about trade and transportation networks, cross-cultural connections, and human-animal relationships. Your order of paladins might benefit from an update here because there are some great potential story hooks to draw players into interacting with it hidden in this paper. Think about how the world of A Knight's Tale could have actually even been more richly rendered if it went into some of the aspects around the complex relationships between knights and their horses. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that you have to ditch everything that you think you know. It's about staying curious, exploring new resources, and being open to revising your understanding, something that historians are doing all the time. If you're feeling like going for a deep dive, jump into peer-reviewed academic papers and books, or if you'd rather keep things more casual, check out the YouTube channels of academic historians who break down complex topics into more digestible pieces. I've got some links in the description to some of my favorites, but by approaching history with an open mind, you open the door to exciting new possibilities to enrich your gaming experience with more depth and unexpected twists. Every great adventure starts with a spark, something that ignites our passion and drives our creativity. So the next step is to lean on what fires your imagination. History is such a natural wellspring for creativity. It's full of incredible stories, people, cultures, and events, both grand and intimate. Embrace what excites you because when you're passionate about what you're doing, it shows in your world building or character creation, and it will be contagious at the table. Take some of the anachronisms of A Knight's Tale for an example. Medievalists have often discussed that people in the Middle Ages were experimenting with fashion, developing new technologies, and finding new ways to enjoy themselves. The problem is, there isn't always scholarly consensus about these things. There's a lot of disagreement about how these social processes unfolded. 
Rather than wade into these disagreements himself, Brian Helgeland, the writer and director of the film, chose to play with what inspired him and used a series of comedic anachronisms to make his version of the Middle Ages unique and accessible. Starting with an open mind and following what inspires you can lead you to some exciting places. And don't be afraid to take a note from Helgeland here. If you see a place to speculate or to play in some historical gray area, jump in. Your world building will be richer for it. So history is all about people and relationships. When creating characters, make sure you get this right. When crafting characters based on various aspects of history, focus on making them well-rounded with motivations, flaws, and dreams. This will go a long way to ensuring that you're not unintentionally creating some sort of one-dimensional stereotype, which is just bad to play and really not a good look if you're trying to draw inspiration from actual human beings. Take Chaucer in A Knight's Tale. Given his place in the English literary canon, it would be easy to write Chaucer as serious, studious, and focused obsessively on his art. Brian Helgeland could even have exploited this characterization in all sorts of ways for comedic value. Instead, he writes Chaucer as a specifically flawed younger man who needs to learn and grow, tempering his vices so that his talents can flourish. By subverting audience expectation about what Chaucer should look like, Paul Bettany's portrayal of Chaucer instead invites us to think about what Chaucer could look like. The same goes for creating a society or culture inspired by a specific time period. Don't just paint everything in broad strokes. Delve into the diversity of human experiences to avoid homogenizing people. This depth adds layers to your game and makes it feel like a living, breathing world. This is ultimately where the Northman falls down for me. By curating an almost exclusively brutal and nihilistic Viking Age, it makes the societies of this world feel like they just don't work. If everyone held to the beliefs and norms that the film gives us, this culture would rip itself apart instead of continuing to grow and change and adapt to its circumstances, which, of course, is what happened in reality. Viking Age Scandinavians were not just one thing. These were people, every bit as complex and sophisticated and flawed as us, who disagreed as often as we do. Remember to utilize that historical empathy when crafting your characters and your cultures. This will also help you to avoid awkward and uncomfortable cultural appropriation. As I mentioned in our class guide for Viking-inspired barbarians, I think that unceremoniously playing with sacred aspects of certain cultures is in bad taste. But if you're approaching historical cultures with empathy and respect while staying open-minded about what you know and what you don't know, you'll have a much clearer understanding about what can be played with and the things that maybe there just isn't a good reason to play with. Now this is sometimes a harder lesson for historians than gamers, but humans are messy. They always have been. As much as we'd like to present neat and tidy interpretations about how and why things happened the way they did, it is rarely clear-cut. Professional historians have to traverse dense, intersecting webs of evidence, conflicting accounts, incomplete records, and other historians with axes to grind, all while trying to account for the way that human agency plays out against environmental, social, and cultural pressures. Now, this messiness is intimidating, but for your world building, it is actually an opportunity. Embrace the full richness and complexities of life, both past and present. Let your characters grapple with conflicting ideologies and worldviews uncover hidden agendas, and sift through uncertain situations, both internally and externally. This injects a sense of realism and urgency into the stories that you're developing, and will keep your players engaged as they grapple with all the messy realities of your world. This is what the climax of A Knight's Tale hinges on. The ragtag party of protagonists get caught in their deceptions. They represent a paradigm shift for the society that they're working within, but the big bad evil guy is poised to have his worldview which is rooted in tradition and hierarchy and status quo, win out. At the last moment though, a high-level NPC that the party impressed early on reveals himself, throwing his social capital behind the protagonists and shutting the big bad out in the cold. Now I want to say, there is not a whiff of history to this scene, but every medievalist I know will happily look past that because of the way that the film captures the complexity and social dynamism of the period and its people, instead of requiring every problem to be solved with the swing of an ever bloodier sword. Simply put, complexity is creative opportunity, and it yields rich rewards.
So the flip side of that complexity, though, is that you can't possibly cram every historical detail into your world. On a factual level, there's just always going to be something you miss. But on a practical level, the other people at the table are only going to care about the things that they're invested in. So you're going to have to make choices about what to include in your stories. But what you choose to include and what you leave out can have some important implications. I want to thank historian and game developer James Bailey for this metaphor, but think of this as curation. A museum exhibit doesn't actually display every artifact from a period that the museum holds. Often, they don't even display a fraction of their collection. Instead, they carefully choose specific pieces that tell a particular story or create a certain atmosphere. But these stories can sometimes lack depth, complexity, and diversity if the curators aren't asking themselves critical questions about what's been left out. The same goes for stories in TTRPGs. Think about the story that you're telling, select the historical details and flourishes to help tell that story and encourage buy-in from other players, but at the end of the day, creating a highly detailed facsimile of a person, group, or event from history can never patch over the gaps left if a game world has reductive or stereotypical renderings of things like religion, governance, gender, or cultural diversity. By curating your historical content, you shape the narrative and can challenge conventional perceptions about the past. So be intentional with your choices and watch your world come to life. Returning to the Northmen, by curating a vision of the Viking Age as kind of Scandinavians participating in some sort of cultural level death cult full of fatalism and bloodlust, one of the many things that gets left out is the remarkable vision and forward-looking experimentation of Viking Age Icelanders who, in a time when kingship was unquestionably the dominant form of governance, intentionally tried to create a new state that was governed by collective consensus building. Now, side note, this was anything but some sort of utopic proto-democracy, but the nihilism of the Northmen is still difficult to square with this sort of future-oriented thinking about what is possible. Now, Eggers left these things out intentionally. Simply put, they weren't part of the story that he wanted to tell with this film, and that's fine. In part, history is there to allow us to tell all sorts of stories about the past, the present, and the future. Just be conscious about what you include, what you exclude, and why and how you go about doing it. As I said, the past belongs to everyone, and you should feel inspired and empowered to play with it. But I think there's a responsibility that does come with this. The game worlds you curate also, in small but important ways, have the power to shape how the other players at the table imagine that past too. So tell compelling stories, curate beautiful and richly layered characters and worlds, and use this idea of critical curation to create better experiences for everyone. At the end of the day, I'm really lucky to be able to do what I do. Being a historian is a really good time, so remember that turning to history for world building or character creation should also be creative, inspirational, and fun. Don't take it too seriously. Don't be afraid to get wild with it, embrace the fantastical, and let your imagination run. Historical sources from epics to saints' lives, even more factual sources like chronicles and annals, are full of examples where authors were doing exactly that, getting creative with the details. So you are actually part of a long tradition of people having fun with the past. Whatever system you play, embrace that freedom to create your own unique blend of history and fantasy and just enjoy yourself. So there you have it. My top five, six tips for how to use history like a historian in order to bring your TTRPGs to life. If you want some further ideas about how to use real world history in your games, YouTube thinks you might like this video here. Just remember, research is your friend, but go for authenticity and empathy over accuracy. Find what inspires you, create compelling characters, and most importantly, have a blast. If you have any questions or you want to share your own tips from using history in your games, leave a comment below. But until next time, happy gaming.